Where? North. In the north, right? Um, where we're having northern textile mills, a lot of them women are going to work, right? Now the second industrial revolution, this one happening after the Civil War, we're talking 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s, this is a different type of industrial revolution. The first one involved things like, you know, um, making, you know, were helped by steamboats and making textiles and a lot of the factories were run by quickly running water, right? What's going to be different in this industrial age? Steel. We're going to have steel and railroads, right, and massive amounts of immigrants, way more than before. But the Irish were coming in to, at, the, at the, um, the textile mill time. Now you've got some Irish, but you've also got tons and tons of Italians. I know what you're asking, Mr. Sayer. Do you have a map showing the new types of immigration coming in? I do, Deanna. It looks just like this. Right? So this is showing us where most immigrants are coming from. Now, where are most immigrants coming from? Italy. Yeah, southern and eastern Europe. This is 18, late 1880s through sure like the 19 teens. You are getting obviously some Irish are still coming over and they just stop one day, right? right? But you're getting tons of Italians, Greeks, Polish, right. Slavs, Russians, right? Mm. These people are coming over in droves. And so now in these big cities, like New York and Boston and Chicago, you have huge Irish and huge Italian and increasingly more Greek and Polish, right? Chicago has huge Polish and Greek populations um, in addition to Italian. How many of you have ever seen my big fat Greek wedding before? Right? Where is that set? In Chicago. Wow. Yes. Oh, I... Um, I don't know. I would say they'd be Romanian, but they would just say Romanian. What is that? Ruthian. Ruthenian. Ruthenian and yeah, I don't know. I, I do not know. Um, so what are the major ideas here? The major ideas we're seeing in this industrial era is monopoly. This is an era of robber barons, in which you read about in Zen, and increasing amounts of monopolies. The power of very few or the giant hordes of poor. Another major idea is those same people fighting back, right? With the development of things like unions and strikes. Instead of lumber, we now have, we're going to increasingly start having steel. And railroads and steel become the major um, industrial centers. If you look at this, you can see these little green and red things mark huge factories. In fact, the uh, red is the steel. Where do we see a lot of steel mills? Pittsburgh. Yeah, in the northern Ohio, um, northern Ohio and um, eastern Pennsylvania, I'm sorry, western Pennsylvania area and in northern Indiana and northern Illinois. Have you ever seen the movie Rudy before? About, that was from northern Illinois, right? He worked in steel mills. Northern Indiana, this area right here was heavily union, right? And it was very, very loyal democratic. What's happening in this area in terms of population now, though, is decreasing, right? And the unions are becoming less and less powerful. This was, this was for a while, one of the best places in America to live. People could get out of high school, have a pretty good living, very middle class, um, very nice place to live. In fact, Flint, Michigan, which is today considered maybe the worst place in America, literally like the worst place in America, ridiculous poverty rates, like 20, 30, or like uh, 40, 50, 60 percent poverty, um, was voted best place in America to live in 1955. Um, do you guys know who Roger, or um, Michael Moore is? Here, Michael Moore, the filmmaker, he's kind of, uh, yeah, he, he's kind of known for being really, really liberal. His first movie that was great was not particularly concerned or liberal. It was, a, it was called Roger and Me. It was about um, the steel, he's from Flint, Michigan. It was about the steel, or the um, GM plant closing in Michigan and what, or in Flint, and how it just destroyed a town. Um, so this is the area now that's going to become really important industrially. So have a hand up. Yes? East Slavic. East Slavic, all right. Um, what if they hate West Slavic people? Railroad building becomes also important as it's going to start to connect our country. Our country today, you guys still 
feel the effects of the relevancy today. Um, what time is it right now? Almost nine. What time is it in St. Louis? Eight. 8.03. What time is it in Denver? Seven. What time is it in L.A.? Six. Why do we have time zones? They're pretty, they pretty much mean time. We have standard time and we have time zones. What's standard time means? Start, time zones and standard time are a little bit different, actually. Before we had railroads, when almost everyone farmed, people in Lawrenceburg might think, oh, it's about 9 o'clock. People in Versailles might say it's about 9 o'clock. People in Stringtown might say it's like 9, 9 15. Well, what's the difference, right? Sun comes up, you get up work, sun goes down, you stop working. Right? Does it make sense? But then once you have trains that you have to get on the train at a certain time, it's going to pick you up and take you somewhere. Now we have to start having where everyone in a time zone has to have the same time. Does this make sense? And then also the fact that you can now travel on something that can actually race across land, <coughs> they start having time zones. Does this also make sense? Today, it's not crazy for you. Like when I was in, when I lived in London, it was on the edge of a time zone. Right? London's right on the edge of that time zone. So I would, when I would go to Paris, I'd take the plane to go to Paris, and I would land 20 minutes before I took off. Same thing when I went to Amsterdam. You'd make up some time. When I, uh, when I played tennis in Indiana, we, were, we did not switch times. And Southern Indiana did switch. And so they got out an hour before we did because they were an hour ahead of us. So when we would get out of school, those teams would already be on our tennis courts warming up before we got out of school. They would already get there before us when we got out of school. Yeah, because time zones were crazy. I hate, hate when we spring forward and we fall back. I don't know. I like it when we Why? Why do we have to? Do like of I understand there's it's called daylight like savings, but why do we have to do it? Science says so. Science says so. Science says so. We did if we did then like there's an explanation. It'd be like six, uh, it'd be like three PM and be like really dark. Oh, also it saves like a bunch of electricity. Energy. It only saves energy because we as people don't we look at eight o'clock and say this is when things should happen. Why don't we just go when it's dark? All right, it's getting darker now. We'll start things here. I'm just telling you, it's all artificial, right? We can start later or earlier if we wanted to. It saves energy only because we choose not to adjust ourselves. We've changed the time to fit our schedules instead of the other way around. And I hate that. Although I do like it in the summer where it's like 9 o'clock and still nice outside. But I hate, hate if it's 5 o'clock and it's dark. Yep. It's the worst. Feels like 10 I'm sad all the time. <laughs> like like running outside where it's nice and pretty and it's so happy. It makes me so happy. And running when it's dark, I'm so mad. Oh, it's it's cold. Cold. Shut up, Michaela. No one cares. No, like it's it's pretty. So That's pretty. Yeah, it is. But it's also cold. That's true. Then you breathe in the cold air. And, I don't like that. and then you and then you look at the time and it's like, oh, it's around eight, and then it's only four. Um. All right, the Transcontinental Railroad. Does it say anything about that? Yes, I do. This is, like, this is the time we start having maps in class. Maps all the time. That's not the whole railroad. Shut up, it is. The Transcontinental <laughs> Railroad was built from Chicago going this way from Sacramento going this way, right? So um, they already had stuff going to Chicago. Tell you about this road, or this railroad. What's it up there with? In American history, pretty up there. Yeah, this, the Declaration of Independence, the moon landing, these are the things that we think are important in America. This was huge. We actually connected an entire continent with railroads, and all it took was twenty-five thousand dead Irishmen and Chinamen to do it. Holy. <laughs> um. They were moving, so when they built this, I told you this, they were building 10 miles of track a day. You know how they make railroad tracks? It's not easy, right? It's not easy to nail those spikes into the ground, and there you go, 10 miles of track a day. Many China, uh, Chinese were coming from um, 
from Asia settling in California, and the Irish were used coming this way, right? Um, the Transcontinental Railroad is a huge, huge impact in America. It also connects us economically, Keaton. It connects us politically. It's really, really important, isn't it, Keaton? Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> okay. Let's talk about railroad mechanization. How did railroads used to stop? Does anyone know? They just crashed. Oh, the they, 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 yeah. they just like shoveling coal. Or is that where they had that uh, thing? Today, when they, well, later, and then today when they stop, they use air brakes. What did they use before? They just crashed the reverse. 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 They what? Well, they had a stop. They just ran into it, though. It was steel on steel. Steel wheels hitting this steel. <laughs> it got really dangerous, right? Also, for a while, before they used the Bessemer process, what's the Bessemer process? Anyone know? Yeah. It's where you take iron and you make it into steel, right? Iron's not as strong as steel. A lot of these tracks were built with iron originally, and they couldn't. Thank you.